Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the Intel Pentium 4 1.6A GHz CPU. And this is the retail version of the Pentium 4 1.6A CPU. You get a standard heatsink and fan combination. This is a pretty standard clip design. I will be going over how this mounts onto the motherboard and of course the CPU itself. Now going back here to the heat sinks and the fans, two of these are basically retail versions of the same CPU, the 1.6A, however there is different heat sink design on these. This is an older one and it basically has a smaller fan, spins the same at around 2700 RPMs, but again the fan and the heatsink block itself is a little smaller than this as you can see here and of course not only is the heatsink a little larger on this one, the fan is as well. As for applying thermal compound, there is and the cooler does come with a black compound already on the block. Now I have removed it as you can see and have used arctic silver however you can just use what is on the cooler itself and that's fine and go ahead and then just install it but whatever you do if you remove the black already that's on there the thermal compound you certainly want to remember to apply some thermal compound onto the CPU itself to certainly ensure that you're getting maximum cooling. I will be using the ABIT SD7533 motherboard in this video review today and I will have a detailed video review on this board coming up. Now one thing that is common throughout all Pentium 4 motherboards is this holding base. All it does is hold the cooler down snugly on top of the CPU. Now some boards do come with this already installed on them even with screws in them some do not if they do not it is very very simple to install this of course the reason for them not installing it on some boards is maybe you want to go out and get a different kind of cooler some coolers you install it without this holding base it goes right onto the board itself like for instance the SwiftTech cooler and if you do that that's fine you can go ahead and not use the base or remove this holding base altogether from the board now as for installing the CPU you can see here I have it installed already but it is very very simple to install just pop it in like you would on almost any kind of computer system go ahead push the clip down and it's installed of course your next thing to do would be install the cooler now how is this installed well it is very very simple and certainly an excellent clip design and you just basically pop it on like so once it is seated there you just go ahead and pop this over the top now once it goes all the way down and you have to make sure that it clips in on either side but as you can see here I'm doing this with one hand and it's done and now once you finish that go ahead and just pull these like so and like so and you have your cooler installed. Just to demonstrate here how actually quiet these fans are and this is a key feature to the Pentium 4 that you certainly can use the retail heatsink and the fan that comes with this and certainly it will be very quiet. I'll demonstrate this right now. So again, extremely quiet. And certainly much quieter than a 5000 RPM 60 millimeter fan. So once you have installed your CPU, you want to go into your particular BIOS here and change things like the external clock or the front side bus. You also want to change if your BIOS does have a clock divider ratio so you can go and tweak your memory and maybe overclock the memory in this area or go ahead in the memory area and tweak such things as the latency timing and so on and so forth. Now also of course down the bottom here you can see that there's a core voltage setting and I have it at the max at 1.625. The default on this Pentium 4 is 1.5. So I'm going ahead and try a multiplier of 16 times the front side bus of 150. I'll go ahead and reboot 
You can see here that this is an Intel Pentium 4, 1.6 gigahertz. You can see that right there. And you can see I have it at 2.4 gigahertz right now. So a multiplier again of 16 and a front side bus of 150. But let me go into the BIOS here and I'll show you what the memory is actually at. Now the front side bus is at 150. However, using the clock divider ratio, which is right here, I get 187 megahertz. Yes, the memory is at 187 megahertz. Very fast. However, I am using the OCZ 3000 memory, and that memory is quite good at overclocking. Now, with my case closed and the CPU at max load using the retail heatsink and fan, you can see here that the temperature is quite good at 42 degrees C. So again, so certainly some good results. Now I do have the CPU currently at its default voltage, if you can believe that, 2.4 gigahertz at 1.5 volts. So, so certainly that does help lower the temperatures when it comes to the CPU down a little. If you were to raise this to maybe the max load, which most motherboards will be capable of doing around 1.625, you'll get probably a max load temperature of around 50 to 55 degrees C using the retail cooler. I will be using the SciSoft Sandra. This is the current version, the downloadable version from their website. Let me go ahead now and have a look at the CPU benchmark. You will notice first of all that this one does go ahead, all the rest kind of going off the scale there. The score here is 4505. Compare that to a 2 gigahertz Pentium 4 at 3688. Compare that again to an Athlon XP at 4240. So certainly you can see here some great results from this CPU. Going on now to the CPU multimedia benchmark. Also again the results does show and they are very very high here. The score at 9495. Compare that to a 2 gigahertz Pentium at 7875. Compare that again to an Athlon XP at 8370. And finally memory benchmark of this memory is quite high. The score is 2790. And again, this is DDR memory, the OCZ 3000 memory. The memory I have it at 187. It's DDR, so that basically equals 374 megahertz. Now, if you look at the score here below, that score below, which is 2450, which is lower than the score that I have here, that system is a 2 gigahertz Pentium 4 with RAM bus memory. So this is a situation where DDR memory is certainly exceeding the speeds of even the RAM bus memory. And the score here below the RAM bus memory system is an Athlon XP1800 with standard DDR memory. The score on that system is 2070. Well, what can you say about this CPU? One thing you certainly can say is that it is certainly amazing. To get an 800 megahertz overclock from a 1.6 gigahertz CPU is pretty much borderline crazy. Good crazy? Certainly, yes. Definitely a kick-ass CPU. If you are going out and looking for one of these CPUs, you are certainly going to be in a way taking a chance because not all of these 1.6a CPUs will overclock this high. This certainly is an extremely high overclock. Again, 800 megahertz air cooled with the retail cooler. I'll say it again, it's crazy. I mean, it really, really, truly is crazy. There is reports of some even 1.8a CPUs out there getting to 3 gigahertz air cooled or close on it. So. Again, <laughs> Intel has certainly launched itself back into the overclocking arena in a very, very big way. And I say good because I love overclocking as many of us do. 
Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also check out my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out the forums. In the forums, you can register. Registration is free. You can find out more information about this product and about all the products which I video review. And of course, you can...